So I just got done cutting all of the pieces from the green fabric for the corset and the shrug and I'm starting to realize that this fabric is a bit thinner, um, more shifty than I thought it would be and I'm kind of worried that it won't take well to being a corset. Um, as I was cutting these out, the fabric was shifting around a lot. I'm not sure that would work well for a corset where everything is supposed to be, you know, in the same place. So I think I'm gonna have to use the mock-up that I made as uh, a base layer for this use it as an interlining against the back of these pieces. But this does mean that I have to take apart the second half of my corset mock-up as well, so that I can fuse it to these pieces and then sew it back into a corset again. In the meantime, I still have to use half of those pieces to cut out the lining for the corset, which is gonna be in a different green fabric, then put it onto the mesh to figure out how I want the embroidery on the mesh to work with the shape of these pieces. Okay, okay, I think that's my game plan. I have already cut out the skirt pieces from the green fabric over here, and I still have to cut out the mesh pieces for the skirt as well. But, you know, progress. All right, we've arrived at the fun stuff, by which I mean busting out the embroidered mesh. Uh, and by fun stuff, I also mean crawling around on the floor for an hour to get this pattern layout. And I'm not even done because all of this still needs to be cut out, but it, it's really looking pretty. I'm hoping the colors show up okay. On the view screen, the pink is showing up a little bit pale, but I promise you it's more pink in reality. So I just played around with these pattern pieces until I, you know, found a, a layout that I liked for both the corset and the shrug. Yep, gonna be nice. I have finished the outer layers and linings of the shrug, so now I need to combine everything together. Um, I am still going to make some adjustments to the shrug. I tried this on uh, like it is now, and I found that the arm side is a little bit uncomfortable for me. It's it, it comes out a bit too far at the top here, and it is a little bit too tight in the bottom here, so I think what's going to fix that is just taking it in, making it a bit wider. And of course I'll do the same on the other arm side. I still have to round out the neckline at the top there, uh, which I'm gonna do after I figure out the arm size. I've got the sleeves ready to put in as well. They're over here. Um, so first I'm going to fix the arm side, then um, baste in the sleeves, 
and I'm going to attach the lining to the shrug at the arm side. The original pattern doesn't even have a lining, it just, um, oh, it's not here, but it just says to put bias tape around the outer edge and the armhole here is just turned under. But I don't like that. I want to have a comfortable cotton fabric against my skin, so that's what this is for. So I'm going to attach the two layers with the sleeve in between around the arm size and then from there I'm going to attach that, turn it inside out and that should give me a nice finished armhole and get everything ready to put bias tape around the edges. I'm still kind of debating what I'm going to make the bias tape out of. I've got a pattern here for a continuous bias tape and I'm thinking to use just the green fabric because the mesh is a little bit scratchy and the bias tape is going to be, you know, against my skin on the inside as well. So it's either going to be just the green fabric or I might make it out of the cotton, but it's a little bit greener than my outer fabric. So I think that might look weird. So I'm, I'm probably going to do it from the green fabric itself. So yeah, that's my plan. Now I gotta do it. Well, I was in the zone last night and I didn't film anything I did. So um, let me tell you how it went. I sewed together the outer and inner layer around the arm size with the little sleeves uh, sandwiched between. That was a little bit tough because of the thickness of the layers that it ended up being, but went okay. However, turning it inside out did not work as planned. Um, I, I guess it's... I tried to picture in my head beforehand how it would go and I must admit that turning it actually inside out was a little bit vague, but I went ahead and did it anyway except that I kept ending up with the lining on the outside uh, right sides together every time I tried it. So my guess is that having the arm size as closed loops and having two of those prevents the fabric from actually turning inside out. However, I realized a quick solution to that was to separate the center back seam of the lining. That would give me two separate pieces that I could each turn inwards. So that's what I did. That worked absolutely fine. Um, after turning it inwards, I had to iron the arm size a lot to get it to lay nice and crisp, nice and flat. Um, but I'm very happy with how this turned out. I trimmed a little bit off of the neckline. I made this edge a little bit rounder, made this a little bit less tall because it was coming up high in my neck. It wasn't really that comfortable. And I've been trying to fix this area here. I think from my mock-up, I don't think I made the pattern pieces as symmetrical as I could have. So this keeps looking just a little bit off. I think maybe I need to take off a little bit more here because it's just looking a little bit not straight. Let me line this up with the line on my cutting mat. Like this. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You can see that it's a lot higher up here. <laughs> Okay, that needs a little bit more trimming. I've basted together the two layers uh, with some white thread uh, just to keep everything in place. But I need to even this out just a little bit more, it looks like. And then we'll put bias tape around the edges. Of course, then it isn't quite finished because I still want to attach um, long sleeves of the embroidered mesh inside the armholes here, just around the top here, I think. But I want to save that for when this is kind of done uh, and then I can go ahead and see how big I want those sleeves to be. Okay, let's, let's see if I can make this look a little bit more even.
Well, here's where we're at with the corset. I put in the boning channels, a two on each seam, and then I attached the lining to the outer layer along the back edges, flipped it inside out and added more boning channels here. Then I basted and bound the top edge, uh, but then I started boning and I got about halfway through. You can see the difference in the corset uh, shaping itself here. Uh, and I realized that the amount of boning I have left will not be enough to finish. So I've ordered more, but I have to wait until that comes in before I can continue working on this. So in the meantime, I thought I would start on embellishing the shrug. Like this lace is very pretty on its own, but I want to have some bling. So what I'm going to do, let me get this out of the way real quick. I have these shinies in my stash and I think they would look good on the shrug and the corset. Uh, it's just a little bit of shimmer, just a little bit of bling. So I also got myself some glue and tweezers to put them on the fabric on strategic places. I'm hoping to add them to the embroidered parts of the mesh mostly because the, the mesh and the green fabric beneath, they, they are loose. They are not attached together except at the seams. And if I put the glue through the mesh onto the green fabric, I'm worried that it might pull weirdly. So I'm gonna try to keep the bling on the embroidery here. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do for now. Um, if my boning doesn't come in uh, after this is finished, then I might actually go ahead and start on the skirt instead. Um, I guess we'll have to see. No idea how long I will take embellishing this and the boning might come in tomorrow, but otherwise it's gonna be somewhere next week and I'm not sure when. All right, let's, let's add some bling. The corset is almost done. My extra boning came in quickly, luckily, so I was able to uh, finish the rest of the boning and in the end I only needed three more bones at the edge, like this one here at the end and then two on this seam. That was all the boning that I needed, but I, I definitely would have been able to finish with the, the amount of boning that I had left. It does mean that this is probably not going to be enough for a future corset, at least not an overbust, so I might have to remember to get more boning if I make another corset in the future, but I will probably have to figure that out halfway through, just like this one. Um, but that's for the future. Right now... Oh, hi, Gasper. Nee, blijf daar maar vanaf. So now that the boning is in, I was able to finish the bottom edge of the corset. I basted it together, then bound the edge. So everything is nice. And yeah, there we go with the focus. Everything is nice and contained. There's no raw edges on the corset anywhere anymore, at least if Casper doesn't put his nails into it. Come on. So the next step is eyelets. I ordered some because I realized that I didn't have any left and I've put down the, the eyelet guide that is in the pattern. I'm not sure that I want to keep it like this because it's very close to the binding here. So I might tweak this a little bit and then we'll have to uh, punch holes into the fabrics. That's going to be quite a task, I think because there's a thick canvas in there and then three more layers of other fabrics. So <laughs> that's gonna be fun, yeah. I've also prepared, thank you, Casper. I've also prepared the modesty panel. The instructions actually say to put this in before, <laughs> before you add the grommets or eyelets, which doesn't really make a lot of sense to me because then you're just manipulating an extra piece of fabric along the edge where you're working with tools and grommets and finicky little things. So no, I'm going to put this in after putting the grommets. That that makes a lot more sense to me. Yeah, when that is all done, then I can actually wear it because right now I cannot try it on until there's grommets in there. I also bought some ribbon to lace it up with. I do have some lacing. Um, how do you say that? Oh, laces. 
basically, but they're black, which doesn't really go with this whole pink and green pastel vibe. So um, I got the ribbon. It's maybe a little bit more saturated than the pink in the corset, but I think it will look nice. Better than black, anyway. Okay, so my next step is to add grommets. So I've been working on the long sleeves for a bit, the ones that are going to hang from the shrug. So what I did basically, I, I took the sleeve pattern that was part of this pattern, the left sleeve here. So I took that sleeve pattern and I split it up around like the front bicep part of the arm side and then attached that part to the back of it because I wanted to have a slit in the front of the sleeve. And then I recreated that curve, kind of, in the lace fabric, but spread out a lot because I wanted to have kind of a big sleeve. Uh, and I have about a yard, a little bit more, left for either sleeve from this fabric. Which, fun fact, I ordered eight yards, but I think I actually got 10 if I'm adding all of this up together. I have five yards reserved for the skirt. I used about two yards for the corset and the shrug. And then I have about two yards left, well, a little bit more than that for the sleeves. And I think that adds up to about 10 yards. So I think I got more than I ordered, which is always fun. So I pinned this shape onto the shrug and tried it on and decided that I don't like it. It is too tubular. That's not really yeah, I, I just didn't like it. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to follow the shape of these cap sleeves that start about here and end about here in the back. And I'm going to... Um, I adjusted the shape of the sleeve as well, so I eliminated this curve here because it doesn't need to go back up in the front around the arm side anymore. So I just made that straight. I'm not sure if that will work, but we'll see. What I'm going to do now is this is the left sleeve that I've got here. I'm going to use this as a template for the right sleeve, get that cut out. Then I'm going to hem these side edges because they will be open. And then I will, I will put the shrug onto my mannequin and then pin the sleeves from there so that I can play with how it hangs. I have to pleat all of this into this area here, basically. So uh, I'm going to play with that on the mannequin so I can see how it hangs. I also want to make sure that this part of the design here, I want that to show on the top of my arm. So this is going to be gathered and then all of this is going to be gathered as well. But this part I want to keep relatively clear. We'll see if that works out. I'll have to try it on the mannequin. So that's what I'll do next.
Well, here we are. The shrug is done. The corset is done. Ah, it doesn't fit my mannequin very well because the mannequin is not squishy. You get the idea. I've attached the lace sleeves to the shrug. Uh, I think I showed that on camera as well. I just pinned them onto the shrug's lining while it was on the mannequin. Then I basted it, tried it on, fiddled with it a little bit so the fabric hung nicely uh, and I was happy with it and then I stitched it down more securely with a whip stitch and covered the raw edges with some bias tape made out of the lining fabric um, because the raw lace against my skin was not very pleasant and I'm very happy with how she turned out. I've added some of the same bling that is on the shrug to the corset. If I do have time, because we are now less than a week before Castle Fest, which is the event that I'm going to be wearing this, and I still have to finish the skirt. Uh, but if I do have time, I want to add a little bit of sparkle to the sleeve as well. Not as much as the shrug and the corset, just some little bits um, here and there. All I need to do now is finish the skirt. Yeah, very happy with this. Let's go make a skirt. All I need to do now is... Why is that so hard? Gosh, bro. 